it's April already. Can you believe that? And I wasn't going to put up another episode of the electric motor home till I got the DC motor turner. So I've been going all helpful leather trying to get everything wired in, and it is. So I'll check this out. See what it is. So let's see what's going on in here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what happened was. I needed to find a place to route the DC wires to the DC motor and it was really hard to get behind the bathroom and when I started digging I noticed I was like four inches out of the wall wasted space so I took it all out and we can rebuild that and put something better there one cupboard gone and the next cupboard to go is this area here which I cannot understand what a waste of space this is what the variable frequency drive is going to sit on. So instead of it taking up a whole cupboard, it's just going to sit on this little thing here, which I modified. The sink and the range and the refrigerator taken out of that area. And the bathroom and the big cupboard taken out of that area. We've got loads of space. Okay, coming together now, we've got the battery dual switch here. The switches between this set of batteries and another set that I will get later on. Also, got some more batteries. Got these uh, deep cycle batteries here. Got two extra batteries just charging up, and that's the other power supply. So, switch one will turn these guys on. Then, if you turn it to switch two, it'll turn on these guys. Also, got the wires running from the battery into the motor controller here and from the motor controller these wires come out go around here through that little bit conduit and out to the DC motor here and as you can see I've relocated the variable frequency drive on top of a bracket and then it's all mounted onto the wall there what might be considered interesting is I had to use some good support on this lower bracket so I put a panel cover on the back and this is the panel cover here unfortunately it had a slot in the middle of it so I put a mailbox just a folly but it looks great and of course I had to paint the panel partially white partially green then I'll put some I'll put some pinstripe in here and here it is with the pinstripe all on and caulked and in the driver's area we've got the DC motor controls over on this side and on that side we have the AC motor controls though the DC motor does control the actual voltage that is produced by the three phase AC generator yeah, I've got it all labelled out there on the left we've got the speed control and then there's the contactor switch and then the resistor switch on the right hand side of the steering wheel we have the three phase 480 volt 100 amp panel meters and on this side we have the ground fault indicator lights so that's a two in one system there and then coming down here running the voltage for this contactor is the inverter that I've got temporarily attached to a 12 volt battery so this should turn on the contactor at the back of the motorhome. There you go. Can you hear it buzzing? Let's go and have a see here. And that's where the noise is coming from. That contactor is energized. Yes, we've got the controller on the wall. And inside, we've got everything made up now. And then through this blue conduit, we've got the control wires going up to the driver's seat. So I control the contactor, the motor controller, and also that resistance. That's going to be on a switch too. So looking good. Once it starts running, and I'm satisfied that the apparatus runs well, then I'll start building beds and closets and cupboards and stuff. 
but I need to do testing first. Okay, we'll see if we can get this DC motor to run. First off, I turn on the main dual power switch to battery bank 1. There, so that's battery bank 1 there. Now that battery bank 1 is on, you can see here, that tells you the state of charge of the batteries, it says 100%. So the next thing to do is to turn on the resistor across the contactor. Okay, seems alright. Turn contactor on. Okay, that light tells us that the contactor is on. Now, the motor is not running at all. But, if I turn this, nothing at all. I can hear something. Yep, that's... Listen, that guy, Gorma. I don't know how fast it's going, like... Oh yeah, oh yeah, full tilt, full tilt. And there it is back there, spinning around like crazy. Can you hear it? Alright, the motor is slowing down. So this circuit is complete. I know it's working. And I can hear that motor slowing down. Sounds good. Oh, what a great day. So the next thing to do is, once the motor stops, you turn off the contactor. I'm going to turn off this resistor and then once that's off you can go back and turn off the main power here there oh yes that definitely looks like a DC motor moving to me like that man when I wired up the DC motor according to my wiring diagram I turned everything on and nothing happened. I mean the contactor kicked in no problem uh, but when I turned the potentiometer to get the motor running nothing happened and the reason was is because I had missed out this wire here and this wire attaches to the negative 48 volt battery line so you've got negative 48 going into there and that goes to this controller here and the reason was was this was a flight systems controller which seems to be really good we have to wire them differently to how you normally wire controllers it seems like because I took my wiring from an image I saw on the internet for a standard electric vehicle so with flight systems controllers you have to run a negative wire to one side of that 5k potentiometer. The VFD is now all wired up and closed up. It's ready to go. Everything's connected except for the pulley wheel and the alternator have not got the belts on because this pulley here I'm not happy with it, it's not very, it's not tight enough. I'm going to have to get a smaller um, splined hub to fit on the shaft here. And this is the very last part of the puzzle. Once we get this hub on, we can get the belts on and get some power. 480 volts. There's this switch here on the dashboard, which is for the variable frequency drive, turns the power on. I had to pull the whole dashboard apart because when I wired it up several months ago I came back and forgot where I did. <laughs> Got the solid charge controller relocated closer to the batteries so we can keep everything charged. And in here on the actual motor DC speed controller before I found the right wiring diagram for it I thought there was something wrong with it so I tore it, I tore off the end cap but then figured out oh, there was nothing wrong with it. 
but while the end cap was off I mounted a fan which is great because this will keep everything nice and cool as well as the heat sink that this is on well that's the end of episode number 20 thanks very much for watching and as you can see I'm quite happy at this progress especially this episode getting this thing done and also a big shout out to Roger from Flight Systems that's the company that made my DC controller and without him giving me the information I would not have got that motor running so that was real kind of you Roger and I really appreciate the customer service alright mate thanks